So, welcome to Family Camper Van Adventures, and today I'm going to do a oil change service on the uh, on the camper van on Cozy. It's not due till uh, June next year, but the MOT is due. Uh, well, we're getting it done next next week, so so hoping to do the service at the same time. Uh, Most of the stuff you need, um, some axle stands, uh, some tools, a box with all the service spares in, um, an oil drain uh, tray uh, bottle, um, got trolley jack. We've also got a small trolley jack. This, although it take the weight, of the camper van, it's not high enough, so you will need a high lift trolley jack but uh, I've got this one anyway so I'm going to use it or may use it um, some cardboard put underneath the van while you're working on it so you don't get any oil and stuff on the van on the on the drive um, small rags uh, for cleaning up any mess um, I've got a disposable cover all on got my safety boots um, some disposable gloves as well are handy Oh, and the trusty Haynes manual. First thing you want to do is uh, pop the bonnet. Alright, bonnet popped. If we want to just check your, your levels. So, yeah, power assisted steering. No, that's power assist the steering, that's your brakes, brake. uh, that's your, your coolant, and then you've got your screen wash in there, that should be fairly full anyway. I uh, don't need to worry about checking the oil for now. So, although we're not going to jack up the back, or not planning on it, um, got the handbrake on, but chock the rear wheels, even with some proper chocks or bricks, or in this case breeze blocks. I've done both sides, so then yeah, extra. You know it's not going to go anywhere. And then you want to jack up and put your axle, axle stands under. So you have one side at a time. So you use the jacking point to jack it up. And then I'm intending to find somewhere to put the uh, axle stand probably on the uh, on that metal beam under there. Right, that's how high I need it. I don't really want it any. Might take it a little bit higher, but as long as the wheel's off the ground, 
Shouldn't really need it any higher than that. Take a little bit more. So I'm just have a little look, make sure that that is load support in the uh, uh, that beam under there. I'm pretty sure it is. So it should be all right with that. And I'll get the axle stand under there. And uh, I might put it on a bit of wood just to protect the drive. Right. So we're up on that axle stand. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it onto this, this jack as well, just to be extra safe. Um, can't be ever too safe working under a vehicle. So as you can see, this one's not quite high enough. So what I'll do is I'll bring this one down onto the axle stand, put this one under a bit of wood on top, see, or maybe even the um, the pad there, see what one works best. Um, and yeah, just keep, keep this side extra secure then before I jack up the other side, and then um, put it on the other axle stand. think I've not jacked a vehicle up before but I've obviously done the wheels on this <laughs> but that's not actually working right underneath it and what I only have for hours I've worked on has been a bit lighter although still <laughs> heavy enough to <laughs> to crush you on the other side. I think that's where the suspension, I don't think it's actually lost height. That's where you pull it up, jack it up this side. It reduces the height on the other side. So, is anything too bad going on there? Let me try and get this one under. Stands under, supported. Right, this is all up on the axle stands now. So it's taking the weight. I'm just going to take the jack up so it's there. So anything moves you're on the both jacks each side as well as the axle stands. Oh, we should be able to give it a bit of a push. Should be all nice and solid. So get cardboard underneath and uh, 
then uh, stop doing the service. Right. So I've got some helpers back, but I shouldn't really have children playing around, so they're going to go in inside or play in the back in a minute. Put the cardboard under. Let's take the drive. And then the first job is take the oil cap off, dip stick out, and then um, we're draining the oil down because you want that drain in the whole time. You do a load of other stuff, make sure it's all drained out before you put it, put that in again, put new oil in. Now. Right, so I've taken the dipstick out, taken the oil uh, cap off, put them over here to keep them safe, wiped them all off. I did check the oil level and dropped down, it was still at a good level, so we know I've got shouldn't have any leaks or drinking or um, drinking oil, so that seems good. So we're now drain the oil out. Right. So here's your sump plug. Right. Here's the sump plug. 19 mil socket or spanner. And let's make sure we are. Oh, that's tightening, so we need to loosen it. Right, slacking it off. Get your container underneath. And then you should be able to do the rest by hand. Your container's big enough. This is a 10 litre container and it's got 9 litres of oil, which this is where it can be messy. So, let's see how clean we do this. Not very clean. That's why you have your rags and that to hand. Try not to drop your sump plug in the in the tray. It's not too bad with this tray because it, it won't probably go down the hole. But um, other trays that are completely open, you don't want to be drop it in there because you'll be making a mess. Uh, let's clean up this oil before it soaks through. Just leave it there. It's fully drain out. You can get suction pumps, but um, I don't think you get everything, all the rubbish out. I do recommend um, running the engine a bit, get it a little bit warm. But say. You don't want it too warm because you've got to work on the engine. Right, so this is all the stuff I've got. This is not your normal service because I'm doing everything, doing all the filters on it. I got it from this uh, place, Ferguson of Sterling. Got it online. Um, best price I could see. I think I sells anywhere I got it from. I think it was from um, FOS Auto Parts I think I got it on. Might be wrong. That's got oil filter, 
Bosch oil filter. Bosch, um, this is the uh, cabin filter, pollen filter. Got the uh, engine filter. Yeah. Air filter the engine. This one's the, yeah, the cabin, cabin filter. And I've got a new diesel filter. And then I've got the uh, seven litre, seven five, six. Yeah, seven litres of long life engine oil. Actually, I think that's right, yeah, seven litres. I said nine litres earlier. But yeah, seven litres long life engine oil, which is, uh, I guess this is Trident oil, but it is um, performs to the Volkswagen specification. So I may do it every year anyway, but I thought let's get the long life and then it's done properly. Right, so now we've got to do the uh, under the cabin filter now. So there's some T20s up here. Move this panel. There's Torx uh, screwdriver. But to get a different um, adapter on that one up there, put the screwdriver under it. Alright, so I've got a, uh, a little uh, Torx bit on a ratchet. And then it's just up in there. It should be the panel for the air filter. Alright, get on with you. Function. Over there. Right. So. right, so I've got a um, 5.5 mil socket on it here. We're going to get leaves and all sorts come out of this. Let's see if we can get a bit of green. There it is. A white thing. Out a bit, Put your hands. So, gotta get all the leaves. Come out of there. And, yeah, very dirty. Yeah. I'm thinking about this in either way. Looks like it's only directional. Now, all the leaves in here now. Move that out. Yep, these are um, one way filters, but it tells you on the side what way it goes. So, where were the leaves are on that side, so it should go in that way. I'm assuming. Just make sure I have a bit of leaf up in there. Yeah, so that's the field. 
Double check things. So yeah, this side is your uh, side the leaves are on. <laughs> there we as well. Same size as the old one. That way over. A little slot so that we're only going one way. It's a little slot in it. So you can't really go wrong. Say that. Here we go. Straight up in. screw this side next time should be easier <laughs> and then I would have forgotten how I'd done it back in so a lot of things are going to do it one way <laughs> This is a lot of the people in the factories and that we assemble these. Yeah. Don't want to be uh, going wrong on a brand new one, do you? So. Tidy the service on our old, uh, old mini, so yeah, it's a bit, things are a bit, bit, a bit differently then. So I think it said on the packet packaging when it come in, does it, it's the Audi Q7 or something. So it's like a lot, yeah, it's a lot of Volkswagen parts have multi use, exactly the same. Yeah, a cup of tea, please. Isaac, you're right. Other than fucking up my socket set, no, he's out with my socket set on the <laughs> getting all the bits out. <laughs> right, so that's one filter done. Panels all back up. Put these tools away. And I'll be able to hoover up these leaves. Right, and the mess and under here, because the wind's blowing the drips around a bit. That's why put all this cardboard down. Next job is the engine airfield, which is under there. Just 
guys on this, I've got a special tool for it. and stuff you want in here. It's your filthy dirty filter. Screen filter. Okay. Let's check up in the box. This is the uh, clean side, so there's nothing in there. There's a big another gauze in there as well. on this side it so it makes it a little bit and realize it's not there that went a bit too easy <laughs> that is wedged it underneath it <laughs> might be easy with uh, briars actually I think. It wasn't supposed to rain today. I'm feeling some spits on the back of my head. Um, 
Mind your hoses. Now I think we'll do the uh, oil filter just in case we've got to stop this fuel filter will be the next one. Uh, yeah it's down in there so we need a special socket on there and then all my long reach bars. Yes it's a 32 mil fortunately because these are a different um, end to these and I've got an adapter so fortunately I've got 32 in my socket set so yeah everything all down in there you can quite see difficult and then we're untighten it get it all out have some rags handy we'll sort that out. yeah so that's a little bit messy so that's why have all the card underneath is good i've missed, cleaned up the mess in the in the engine bay here's your old filter so hang it about this up clean this up so you've got some uh, old o-rings there you've got new o-rings with the set so you can take all these off and use a old use a screwdriver for this because it doesn't matter what happens with these because these are done. I have already checked the set before I uh, started so it's always a good idea do that you don't want to be <laughs> getting through it and uh the way. There we go. Down the driveway get all this off so it's three o-rings these two little ones They're all different slightly different sizes Yep. And then make sure you make a note of what way you take this off. I'll leave it the right way around. And then we've got one more O ring up the top here. I don't know why I've always phoned you, it calls you at the wrong moment. Um, what do you want doing? Give me a sec, I'm just cleaning this up. These are microfiber cloths because they're yeah, quite good at soaking things up. Right, change my gloves, speak to Nicole. Uh, right, so the oil filter does say top on it. Where is it? Yeah, top. So you know which way it goes around because this is the top. So got a new O rings. So I get a bit of oil on them. New oil. Just one first. Do this by hand. I don't use any uh, tools for this. Just have to do the groove. Slowly ease it on. Thanks. 
size small one. Yeah. Medium size one. off we'll get back on the oil get minimum wear on that and then get the uh, filter goes on with the top uh, the tops at the bottom on this face <laughs> is the same size. It's just a case of getting that all back in. So remember to start this off by hand and then tighten it up. Don't over tighten. It's only meant to be, I think the manual says 25 newton meters. So it's not, it's only plastic. So. Yeah, 25 oil filter cap. So, yeah, it's a 7 litre set. So. Yeah. And then it's only 30, yeah, it's 25 for the oil filter cap, 30 for the sump plug, and yeah, 180 for the road wheel bolts. So I've got a torque wrench, it only goes to 40 so yeah, as long as this doesn't go click we should be alright. So that's it done up, should be good, I may have done it over tightened a little bit but it didn't feel too tight. Um, it's still dripping a bit under the, uh, the sump so I think we'll do the uh, fuel filter next which is down below the uh, down here, so I'll have to take the might be a bit difficult because we've got the uh, the battery to battery charger in the way. Right, so I've moved the uh, expansion tank out of the way. See the filter there. We'll get a picture of that. Make sure we know where everything's come off of. Um, there's a clamp there that we need to loosen. So we'll get a picture in there of the. Uh, of everything and then we take all that out we we'll disconnect all the all the ends all the hoses they're just push fit connectors was disconnected done taking off the charger could have done with taking that plate out but it's a bit awkward so i'll see if i can get away without it right let's get a picture all right there's everything off so just got to get that filter out and um, kept very wet there that'd be full of full of diesel so don't um spill it and you need to um, dispose of that accordingly. In theory, it should be okay to reuse it because it's um, only been obviously the filter <laughs> does the filtering. So you put it back in the tank, yeah, you um, it'll get filtered again. So I can't see any reason not to use it again. I'm sure someone will say <laughs> a reason why, but um, yeah, I might um, dispose of it um, safely, probably at the tip somewhere. <laughs> the fuel filter in all the hoses back on we will need to prime that later there's a few different ways of doing it i'm hoping on an easy way i'm not i'm going to do a combination of what it says in there and just a, a bit of guesswork um but we'll see see how that works out uh, and then we do put the sump plug on once we've got the all this back together and fill the oil up Right, so I reattached the uh, K 
cable on, plug. Um, that hose clips in there, the cable runs in there, two screws on the front. When I put those hoses back on the fuel filter, they just click when they go on. You don't need to do anything more than that. Um, you'll see the battery to battery charger back on. And while it's up on the ramps, I'm going to do a few other checks. It's for the manual, like on the suspension and that, just check there's nothing. And the, uh, the uh, universal joint gaiters, drive shaft gaiters and all of that, and brakes. Um, I won't go into too much detail about that, but it tells you in the manual, in the Haynes manual about checking all of that. Um, just a quick visual inspection. I know the brakes are getting a little low, but they should be all right to, um, for a few. I can't really see, but, yeah, especially the fronts. The backs aren't too bad, but um, yeah, the, they will need doing at some point soon. But they'll be all right for the MOT, and as long as I keep an eye on them, and do them when they need to be done, that uh, should be fine. So I've got a new sump plug with washer. Um, so get that on, get it torqued up, and then clean up all the mess underneath. And uh, then we'll uh, get the, uh, put, well, probably have to take the jack um, jacket down and uh, then we'll do the, uh, fill the oil up. Alright, so I'm glad I put all this underneath because I made a right mess. I've been using a, right, a proper tray, but there's the sump plug back in. So I think we need to bring the jacks down, jack it all down, then all my other checks. Um, no other problems other than needing the brakes doing at some point soon. Um, and hopefully, put the oil in, and we should pass um, pass the MOT. Right, so the jacks are all out. Um, the axle stands. It's a three-ton axle stands. Um, it's a two-point-two-ton. Trolley jack, but that's just enough. Um, this fan, over one's two ton anyway. Again, both enough to lift it. Uh, and we need to put about half the oil in, um, and then we keep topping up in bits until we're on the max mark on the dipstick. Yep, I've got a funnel. I'm hoping we'll just be able to use it. That's a brand new funnel. So hopefully we'll be able to just. Put it in like that, and uh, top it up like that. Right, while I've been topping this up, I've been checking the sump plug. Make sure we've got no leaks coming out the sump plug underneath. It all looks okay. Right, so topped up the oil about half a litre short of the seven litres. One in there, and it's showing maximum level. So. Now we've got to prime the fuel pump, our fuel filter, and then start it over. Um, get it all, and then probably top the oil up. Probably the rest of that half litre should then sort because it's got to fill up the uh, oil filter and all the galleries and that. So, right, let's get uh, let's show you how to do the uh, priming the fuel filter. Right to prime the fuel pump. Now, if you've got a the gadget to plug it in you can just run the pump otherwise you've got to do it this way by turning the ignition on for a few seconds and it'll run the pump for a few seconds turn it off turn it on repeat this Times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just check that there's no leaks. Turn the radio. So I'm going No leaks coming out of anywhere. Right there. 
Do doing this. We're gonna do it way more than I need to. Just in case. Because you run it without fuel and you're risking damage to the engine. Alright, so check for a neutral. And now we're gonna try and start the engine. Hopefully that won't die on me. Because that should prove that we've run out of a... Uh, I didn't prime the uh, fuel filter. Now uh, let's check for leaks. Another on the side. Another the sump plug. Cut out yet, so down around the, the filter and it's the sump plug, they're the bits you've had off. And so a check around your fuel filter and leaks. Obviously, you don't do this every time, but I'm doing it because it's the first service I've ever done on this, so. I don't know what's been done properly or not. Um, I'm doing everything. I'll run it for a few minutes, make sure everything's going as it should. We pull this hose about, so check on that. This is why I keep all the uh, cardboard still under here. And then once we've done this for a few minutes, we will uh, turn it off, leave it a few minutes, check the oil level, top it up as needed. Make sure all the lights are out. Yeah, so it's just the, the normal lights you would get, parking brake. The door open, seat belt off. And then we have to uh, once we're all done, reset the service counters. Now, in the garage, I should have somewhere a nice stamp that I got off of, uh, I think off eBay. Uh, where was it? Right. Um, yeah, so a service stamp. Should be a Volkswagen one. It says Volkswagen service on it. So you're doing it with all Volkswagen approved parts. The uh, the oil's the right approval. So just make looks just keeps the service book looking good. I know I'm doing it right. See the oil on it is got the Volkswagen numbers on it. Long life. It's the main thing you're looking at. Obviously Bosch filters can't go with them. So hopefully. <laughs> Unless they're not off boss. And then while I wait, I will move the uh, the blocks out of the way. Move all my tools out of the way. And give it a test run. Hopefully, it will be well. Alright, just check the oil level. It's gone down a bit. So I need it just above half on the dipstick. So I probably will put a bit more in. Um, and then I'm tidying up my tools. This uh, Sealy Jack is great. Does the job. Lifts it high enough. Uh, 2.25 tonnes, so that's alright. And these uh, Silver Line um, ratchet. Well, ratchet in it, they ratchet up into place. The only thing I'm a bit worried about them, they don't have um, locking bits. That's why I was making sure extra you leave your jacks under. It's handy, I've got two jacks, so I can do that. Um, not everyone does, but you know, they seem to seem to be stable. They haven't, yeah, no problems with them. So they're free, rated at three ton each, so yeah, no problems with them. The only thing I wouldn't recommend is these this 
obviously came up on um, Amazon. I'll have one of these, but it's not doesn't really fit on this one. And yeah, it's a bit precarious. Even on my other jacket, it's precarious. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend bothering with that. It's um, you're better off with a bit of wood or anything, something like that. So they're a bit yeah. If you don't get it central, you're risking it sliding off. So I don't know. I'll keep it for now. Might be useful for something else. So. I'm just tidying up now, so make sure. So you, these filters probably go in the bin, but um, your oil filter, make sure you dispose of that. The tip, the oil, decant it, use your funnel, and just clean it up into your, into your old, into your, your bottles, and then take them to the tip. Um, so yeah, um, don't um, just throw it all in your, your normal rubbish bin. Uh, so it's uh it's no good obviously i'm going to clean up these rags anyway and reuse them so all looking good so far so um just got to top up the oil and then uh redo the uh, reset the service counter and stamp the book right so so we're going to reset the service count the haynes manual is a bit sketchy now you do this um, but I've looked at some YouTube videos. Now, the moment it's most like my van. Tells you. Now, the thing to remember with this, it will reset the, um, change it, because unless you've got the Volkswagen Direct tools, you can only reset it to, like, the annual um, 10,000 mile service. So, but then if you know you've got long life oil in there, it's up to you whether you change it or not. You, you just reset it. So, press this button here scroll through till you get to the so mine's not due for like 17,000 miles <laughs> 138 uh, no 17 yeah it doesn't say it does say the day somewhere but yeah so 17,000 miles so you're on there and then turn the ignition off now it's going to be difficult because I've got to hold this all right let's see if we can uh, wedge this somewhere so yeah, we're doing this. Oh, I've got an idea. Stick out one of my prongs on my, uh, my holder. And then raise it up. There we go. So push and hold this button. Ah, oh, wait a minute, we've done that wrong. Let's start again. Right. So turn it on. Scroll through, turn the ignition off, push and hold this button, turn it on. And then let go, and then on the other side press the other button. should have reset it we shall soon find out if we got to scroll through there we go that's not 10,000 miles it's changed it to um, 12,500 so that shows you how little miles I'd do any <laughs> a year and a half since it was service last so yes 12,500 till it's um, due a service again but obviously or a year so Worth bearing out of mind, but um, I'll put that in the book. I've got long life oil in it, and um, I can always reset it in a year's time or service it. I might just do an oil change in a year's time just because the low mileage I do. But if I don't, at least I know I've got the, oil, look, the long life oil on it. Right. We're looking the uh, filter in this funnel where I've decanted the old oil into the bottles. Yeah, all the bit of crap in there. So I've not quite got seven litres, but then a lot of it's in the rags. Some are still in there, and some of it's just all in the uh, cardboard and was in the old oil filter. So I'm not too worried there. And also some of it's been burnt up in the engine as well. So, just time for a test drive. Run it for a bit and check for any more oil leaks, but I think we're okay. Um, and that's it. 
thanks for watching um, obviously take professional advice uh, before doing your own work on your own on your own van um, it's just entertainment purposes I take no responsibility uh, for your own for your own vehicle um, you do it at your own risk um, so just a little demonstration of what I've been doing so uh, don't copy me <laughs> basically um, so if you like this video please like it um, and if you like what we do on the channel subscribe see the latest videos um, have a look at our uh, our trips and uh, yeah subscribing doesn't cost anything to you just keeps you up to date with us and does help the channel so, and any questions uh, feel free to put a comment down below right thanks for watching uh, see you again soon